Hello, and welcome to Will's Infinite Library. I am Will, and this is my Infinite Library. It just goes on and on. There's like mirrors, and there's a lot more books than it looks like. Today, I wanted to do something a little different. I became a Canadian citizen earlier this week. Yay! Uh, so I wanted to talk about Canlit, Canadian literature, as kind of a celebration of this wonderful country and the amazing creative energy flowing here and the cool books that have been coming out recently. So Canlit is a term that's kind of hashtagged a lot and thrown around, just meaning Canadian literature. Um, and there's kind of a push to make it more diverse, more representative of Canada today, which is a very diverse country full of immigrants from all over, indigenous people who have been here for thousands of years, members of the Two-Spirit LGBTQ plus community, people of color, like the list goes on and on, people of all religions, all kinds of people in this country. There is a thriving literary scene here. Canadian literature is more than just Margaret Atwood. She's amazing, don't get me wrong. Margaret Atwood is, is. Margaret Atwood is a national treasure, but there are a lot of other great things going on, especially from small independent presses, which are just cranking out amazing books left and right. And I wanted to talk about a few of my favorites that I have read recently today. So first up is The Melting Queen by Bruce Cinnamon, which is just a beautiful book inside and out. Don't judge your book by its cover, but also maybe like if it has a beautiful cover, maybe just kind of dive in. Because like worst case, you saw a beautiful cover and held it in your hands, even if the book was terrible. But in this case, it's beautiful inside and out. So why this book is so cool is because it's about one of my favorite themes, which is kind of identity and a character who's figuring themselves out. It starts off with a character who identifies as a gay man and then realizes that they're more than like a one gender or sexual identity and they just continue trying to figure themselves out give themselves a new name figure out who they are beyond the binary beyond all the things that they've been kind of conditioned by our world to believe they are and it's just a really cool powerful story in that sense also it's set in this weird cool magical world that's very rooted in real world edmonton but also very magical. So it all centers around the Melting Queen, um, which is, there's this ceremony that happens in this magical Edmonton every year when the river melts. The first day that the river melts, the water flows and spring comes and there's this big festival and it's super magical and they crown a Melting Queen who kind of represents uh, like everything represents the coming of spring, new life, rebirth, which is really poetic and beautiful with the main character kind of figuring out who they are and kind of reinventing themselves and their perceptions of the world and themselves. And so that's super cool. And it just keeps getting cooler and cooler. Like the there are a few main characters and it's there's this really cool part at the beginning where everyone kind of copes with winter in a different way. And this is one of the reasons I feel like this is such a powerful, very Canadian novel is that the, the long, hard winter really does change and shape you when you live in Canada or any really cold place. And often a lot of hot places, you kind of hibernate for hot seasons. So I think anyone can kind of identify with it, but uniquely Canadian is the winter. And the three main characters cope with it in different ways. One of them leaves every winter, they go somewhere else and then they come back on the first day of spring. One of them hibernates and just sleeps through winter. And then the main character says they endure winter. They just live through it and kind of, it, it doesn't feel like they're fully alive in a way. They're kind of like walking like a zombie through winter, but they're enduring it. They're getting through it. They're not sleeping through it. They're not leaving. They're enduring in this magical Edmonton. And it's just a very beautiful book. It's a lot about kind of reinventing yourself, reinventing the world and figure out what it should be, what it wants to be, what it is. And it's really cool and really fleshed out the history of this magical world 
and I'll show you in the back of the book, there is, well, actually there's more than I remembered. There's um, a list of all the melting queens throughout history and it gives like a little bio of each of them and there's like pages and pages of these bios. So it's like really fleshed out and well thought out. And then there is the Melting Day Proclamation, which is in there as well. Um, so it's just a really cool, really thought out, really real, fully realized kind of alternate world. And a really awesome book I very highly recommend. Next up is Arborescent. And you'll see some of my books have these um, different kind of covers because I write reviews and get that's why I get a lot of these books from smaller independent presses is because I write reviews for them. So I have uh, advanced reader copies of those. And it's it's a really cool way to help me find books that I wouldn't have otherwise and get them on my radar. Though a lot of these books have gotten a lot of buzz and are doing very well nationally at least, and I hope getting some reach internationally as well. Um, so Arborescent also has a few main main characters all dealing with different magical things as well. It's also very rooted in reality and I think this is kind of my favorite type of story is one that's very much grounded in reality in our real world but strange things kind of happen that make you look at reality differently. I find that really powerful and moving and it makes me look at things in a new way which is one of my favorite things about books in general is that they have that power. So Arborescent follows a few different characters. One of them, like the namesake of the book, is slowly turning into a tree. One of them is kind of possessed by this spirit creature. Um, and it's, it's just really cool. Like there's all this strange stuff going on, but also keeps it real. Um, it's by Mark Herman Lynch. It also deals with kind of the immigrant experience in Canada as well which is a, another really cool angle and perspective that's shared there. And then the other book I wanted to talk about briefly is A Dream of a Woman by Casey Platt. Uh, and this is a collection of short stories. I should have mentioned also, Melting Queen is a novel and Arborescent is, I think, considered a novel, but it's really like three novellas with from each character's point of view. And A Dream of a Woman is a short story collection, but it's also different. Like, it's not just your straight up, like, here's 10 to 20 short stories of relatively even lengths. It's several very long stories that are approach novella length, some of which are cut up into pieces that kind of alternate with other stories, and then you get back to these characters and follow them. And a lot of longer pieces, some very short pieces, so it is a mix. It is a short story collection, but it does have these very long pieces in them, which I think is one of the most special things about this collection is Casey Platt's writing is very realistic. This one is fully rooted in reality. There's nothing magical going on except for the beautiful uh, writing itself. And the stories are so real. They're so vivid. The characters are so fully realized. And the length of the stories allows the characters to kind of live full lives so often what that does that length is it lets us check back in with the character at different points in their life and see how again it's very much focused on identity and these characters kind of figuring out who they are um who their partners are how they're changing over time who they're becoming and it's really beautiful in that sense it deals a lot with transgender characters and characters that are trying to figure out their um, gender identities and sexual identities and just who they are as people honestly more than anything and I think that's what's so powerful about it is it, it again all three of these books really focus on identity and trying to figure out who you are in the world and who you are in relation to other people who you are in relation to who you were in the past who you're becoming and trying to throw away preconceptions and just be yourself and I think that's what's so powerful about them to me and why I love these books so much. I'll try to highlight more small presses that are some of my favorites maybe in another video, but I just wanted to give you a quick rundown of some of the books 
coming out of Canada recently that have really gotten me excited about reading and life and really excited to finally call myself a Canadian citizen and be a citizen of this really diverse country and to see that diversity being reflected in the books that are coming out of our presses. So those are some of my favorites. I'd love to hear some of your favorite Canadian books or your reactions to this video or just whatever you want to share. Always up to hear from you. So thanks again so much for tuning in and I hope to catch you again next time.